Hello people. Udemand is a real-time, collaborative learning platform for software development. It produces professionals that are self-sufficient and have the willpower to compete on global business networks. Here in this video, we will discuss about Workday Finance. Workday Finance streamlines financial processes and provides finance executives and teams authority. It includes real-time cash, liquidity, general ledger, multidimensional accounting, and journal entry automation accounting. Financial insights, customer and vendor trends, and accuracy may be improved while saving time. You've come to the right location to get knowledge about Workday Finance. Get the whole idea by watching all of the available videos. Following are the topics covered in this video series. Business Process Definition Create Customer Contracts Supplier Invoice Reporting In order to learn more about emerging technologies, kindly give the channel a like, share and subscribe to it. Contact us for more details at sales at the rate you demand.org. Let's get started. So we we'll click on these three dots. Company and company on details. So we had seen like the fiscal schedule, the account set. Now we'll talk about the account control rule set. Let me open this in new tab. Okay. So in Workday, accounting happens two, two ways, two ways actually. One is operational journals, another one is manual journal, which you post uh, through month and or like accruals or month in adjustment entries or to fix some amount of balances on a ledger account, right? So for manual journals, here we define some rules or controls here that if, for example, in a manual journal, I'm using a ledger account called cash, 1000, and my approval threshold is 1500, and the currency in that is USD. So anytime I use it more than 1500, more than it should be more than 1500, 1501, 1502, or 1503, then it has to go for an approval. So that's how we'll control the manual journals also. That anytime somebody uses this cash account and they put the amount more than 1501, they have to, you know, go for an approval and somebody should review them and approve them. This is just view account control set. And again, you can say, Create account control rule set. Okay, so this is how you create them very easy. Now, another one is account posting rule set. Okay, so if you look at the view account posting rule set, just type view account. Ledger account is nothing but the GL account, right? GL account, yes. You are absolutely right. Because while uh, creating earnings and deductions for payroll, we add those to the respective GL accounts. So I had that right. question, right? Yeah, they are the GL accounts, yes. Let me show you some account posting rules. Here. Let's try this. Okay, let me give an example. So for your operational transactions, so all operational transaction categories are mentioned here. These are your operational transaction categories like accumulated depreciation, business asset accrued liability, business asset disposal donation, business asset disposal gain, loss, still cash transactions, okay? And your revenue also. So how it worked? So whenever you create a custom invoice, in the background, Workday picks up the ledger account based on the definition defined here or the ledger accounts defined here. For revenue, as you can see in your screen, 
the revenue posting rule identifies the account used to record the sale of an item, typically an income account. Okay, basically, Workday is telling you what kind of ledger account you would add it here. You have to add all your income accounts in this section. So, left hand side, all these are categories. Right hand side, you define the rule. As you can see, account posting rule is revenue, where we have a default ledger account and posting rule conditions also. So, how it works is that suppose my company is and it works from top to bottom. First, it will search the first condition here. Then it will look for second, third, fourth, and fifth. This is how it works from top to bottom. So the first system will check the moment you will create a customer invoice that what was the company. If companies SG and we had used Olive, we'll skip this. Okay, because it doesn't match with our criteria. Second, again, it will look for another line and it will say what is the company here? Oh, this is Metro Power, not the blanket. Again, it will skip. So until and unless it find the right criteria and dimensions, it will skip every row. And you can see how fast it happens. The moment you submit the invoice, next second the accounting is available for you. You can see the power, super power artificial intelligence here. That how fast it looks for the information from this rules. So once it finds out the right condition, let's say we had used the SG company work, right? And the revenue category that we used was subscription. Then it will hit to this letter account. Okay. Then Suppose it checked all the 12 rows here, 12 conditions. It did not find anything. Then it will go to a default ledger account. That yes, I found nothing in the rows. Now let me see the default ledger. So it will post to default ledger account. What if default ledger account is also not there? Okay. Then it will post the journal into an errors bucket that I could not find anything to post. So we are putting this journal into an error mode right now. And there we will run a task called fix operational journals with error. That we'll see in chapter four or five, that how to fix those kind of journals. So clear with this, this section or this account posting rule set is used for your operational journals. Okay. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Now, let me close. Okay, let me go back to the tab. So, we covered the corporate and this posting rule set also. The other option we have selected was journal reversal options. What if you reverse your journal? Okay, reverse your transaction. Then the first option is saying that reverse debit and credit, which means keep them as it is. I'll use an Excel sheet here to demo what this means is let's say terminated employee and then for benefits let's add one more way how we have to enable this mm. Okay, now what it means? Reverse debit and credit. For example, uh, in our original transaction, let's put debit, credit here. Let's put the other accounts 1000, 2000 here. Let's put the amount as uh, 199, 199. Okay, 199 here to come here and the credit. So when we created the transaction, Let's say the revenue category. Okay. These two ledger accounts were hit. Now we have canceled the transaction. So what we are saying is reverse debit and credit. So this debit will move to the credit place. And this debit amount, credit amount, I'm sorry, will move to debit place. That's all. So knocked off the balances. It's zero. Clear on this one? How the first option will work? We are not moving the ledger accounts, we are just moving their amounts. From debit to credit, from credit to debit. Now, the third option, second option, sorry. Keep debit, credit, and reverse the sign. 
okay so uh, sorry the first option was a different one let me just explain one more time it was debiting that what will happen is amount will be negative right yes yes, yes. Yeah, let me just give that example again sorry my bad Hmm. Reverse debiting credit would be now the entry would be debit. Suppose we are reversing the transaction. Okay. Now debit would be 2000 and credit would be 1000. And the earlier example which I gave was the second option. Okay. Re keep debit credit as it is and reverse the sign. So this will, suppose we are talking about the second option. In that case, what will happen is this was, does it count 1000 only? This was 2000 only. This will come in the brackets now. 199 and this would be 199. So earlier, which was in credit uh, in the brackets. Okay. So clear with this example now? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, great. So now we go here and hit okay. So once we are done with it, okay. Now, after accounting setup, we have to create the ledger. Uh, Rahul, like, just one question, like for the tax one, uh, we have not defined. So if we are defining it, so we have to define like through one 1099 or something different for work there. So 1099 is mostly used for suppliers. Yes. So when you set up the supplier at that time, I'll show you where you define the supplier as 1099 supplier. Oh, okay. Okay. And here the tax, if we have defined for the company, then how we have to define, like if there is create tax, something like that, or it's like, a, it's a default uh, for the US one based on the addresses. No, it's not location. default. It's not default. You have to define it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No worries. So now with the next action task is create ledger. So you have to go to this. You have to select your company, blink it. And actual ledger type would be actuals. So get rid of this commitment and budget. This is an advanced kind of thing. We will not get into this budget and obligations. We will simply talk about actual transactions. So after this, the next one is create ledger year and ledger periods. For that ledger that we just created, we need to create the year and periods also. So we'll say blink it. And fiscal year was 22. We are debited only this one. Okay, so this is also done now. So create leather year, leather periods. Now the next task is opening up the periods. Okay. So we in the yesterday class we saw that how to create the periods. Okay. Now we have to open them for the transaction. How do we do that? There's a task called mask update. Ledger period status. Okay, now we have to define the year here. It should be 2022. We hmm. so where is that? So it's a practice, and a lot of people have configured their own. Company, we blink it. So all periods. So for practice, we'll just open all of the periods, but in real world, in reality, 
you would just open it when the period comes. For example, we are ending into January. So we'll select January here, and we'll select January only, and then we'll open that period. But right now, as we need all periods for practice, so we'll see all periods for all book codes and hit OK. And it will not open like uh, on the date specified by us. Like suppose yesterday we have created one fiscal year for each month. So it will not uh, like uh, take it from the SIS date, right? Like, no, suppose no, no. It, will, it will just open 2022 only. Okay. And the period we are defined, not 2023. Okay. Okay. So we'll say open here. Okay. And if you want to close them, you would just like the close period. Okay. And we'll just hit okay. Done. So we have opened the periods also. Now we'll talk about creating manual journals, creating accounting journals. So for that, we have a business process. Let's look at the business process also. Accounting journal. Event, we should have a default definition one. And we'll talk about this business process and security complete day in, in a separate session about that. For now, default definitions are the one which are delivered by Workday. Uh -huh. Okay. What others you see here, these are created by people. These are the custom ones created for the companies, different companies. We can also do that. We'll see that in coming chapters. But for now, we'll just hit on this one. Okay, so now we can see once it is initiated, the first step we have here, the business process step, right? So once it is initiated A, then it will go to A, B. Okay, then B. So it works in the uh, alphabetical orders here. So first A, then B, then C. Suppose you have more step at B. So we'll say B1, B2, B3, B4, then C will start C, C1, C2, C3, C4. Now with this one, A, initiation is here. A, B, then accounting manager, A, P. So this will go to this security groups here. People holding these security groups, accounting manager, A, P, accounting manager, supervisor. And then the last step would go to West accounting supervisor. So we do not have all these roles. So what we have to do is we should create one accounting general business process for ourselves. So this will be a good learning to see how to create a business process for yourself. What we'll do is to create a business process for your company, there are two ways. Either you can go to the business process Business process is nothing, the process to do business. If you just break the words, you define it. So how the transaction will work, okay? How the transaction will go to different people for review and approval. That is the complete process, how it starts, how it ends. So for that, just look for a BP. The short form is BP colon, and then you type the business process name. In our case, we have type accounting journal, and we'll go to it again. So we'll say, click on these three dots. Business process policy, or you go to the business process here. Then you come to this option, copy or link business process definition. Okay, and we'll say, copy workflow business process definition. And you will see, you put the name also here if you want to blink it. Okay, so we'll select the blink it grocery delivery, not the company hierarchy. You can create a company hierarchy based also. So for all the companies rolling up to that company hierarchy, we'll use the same business process. Or if you want to define it at the company level also, you can do that too. So for now, we'll say blink it grocery delivery. That's a company. And Will it okay? Okay, now we'll get rid of these two steps because we do not have the roles created for this company. We'll just keep it simple. Okay, here.
and we'll mark this step as a completed one. So we'll click on this step here and go to set as completion. And Rahul, who has the access to initiate this business process? I'll just show you. So for that, on this screen itself, you can come to know. If you click on the security group restrictions for the initiation step, you can see here itself, initiating security groups. And right. then you have this 21 plus security groups who can do this. But if you want to define it, no, only few people should be able to do that. So click on this three orange dots again. Okay, come to this business process policy. Come to this added part here. You can add a validation or condition rule. No, not the condition. Not the condition is not required. Simply remove these people. Okay, let's okay. remove the, all of them. We can remove and add the uh, security right. groups. Based security on groups, the yes. So let's get rid of all of them. Okay, for now it's accountant. Okay. Then who can review the journal? We have kept so many people here, but we have we not started security part of it. So we'll look into this later on. So this many people can review the journal. So once suppose it is initiated by Venkat, then Urvashi can review it. Okay, so we have to define that security group here who can review the journal. Then who can view the entire process? <clears throat> okay, like I want to see what happened at what time, when it was initiated, who reviewed it, who approved it. So this option view all gives you that access. Then view completed only. So once it is completed, who can see? So these people, like I have not defined anyone here, but implementers obviously have the access to do that. Then who can approve it? So we have kept 12 roles here, so I can get rid of them. And let me say, close, 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 close. Okay, so let's say accounting manager will have the access. Okay. And then ad hoc approve, you can based on approve it on the ad hoc basis. This one. Correct. This one request reassignment, reassign task. Who can reassign that task? Let's say implementers. So suppose the person who had to approve the journal is on leave. Okay, is not available. He took some leave and he's not available, but the, the task is sitting in his inbox or her inbox. Then who can delegate that task or who can reassign the task from his or her queue to someone else queue at the similar level or the higher level who can approve that journal. So you will see all this in coming days. So don't worry about it right now. If it doesn't make sense right now, because once you start hitting transaction, you'll see all of these examples, how to reassign tasks, how to see view completed only, request the assignment. So it's like, these are like initial days of learning. So maybe sometimes you will not understand few things, but as and when we progress, because we have to cover a lot, a lot. So by that time, you would understand each and everything. And this will look very easy to all of you. So we'll hit OK here, but we have to activate uh, pending security policy changes. So anytime, guys. <coughs> Anytime you uh, make any changes to a business process or a domain. So domain we have not seen so far, but I'll show you in the security chapter. So domain is also a place where it's a place where it's a collection of tasks and report. And to access those tasks and report, you need access. You need access and then we add the right, just like, just like we did now, we remove some security groups, we added some security groups. There also, you have security groups only. And we add them, we remove them as per the requirements or the business requirements. So domain is a place where you have a set collection of tasks and report. And to access them, you need to be there with the right security group. So we'll see that in coming chapters. For now, I just have to activate pending security policy changes here. Activate pending security. Test. So it will put a timestamp. Like what happened at what time? Okay. 
confirmed. Now we'll just confirm it. Yes, these are the changes we want to be done. Okay, so this is done. Now we'll create our first journal. Now we'll say create journal. The task is create journal. Why is not giving me access? So we'll go to view all tasks and reports. Uh, maybe he's not like having access to do that. Let me just define his access on our BP. So this guy, okay, he's in BP. Let me add implementers there because we just added accountant. So again, we have to go to BP, journal, blanket. And we have to say the access should be with implementers also. Yeah. And uh, what's wrong here? Invalid groups. Okay. Import. Uh, okay. Let's see. Then review journal will just click and okay, then what else? Looks good. Only what is wrong here? You know? Should be good now. So let's activate when we security policy changes again. What's the error here? Emergency beginner and bubble step. Group that we have done already. Let me activate this. Ah. Will it okay here? Hmm. Let me see that BP again. It should work now. Mm -hmm. Yep, looks good. And then implementers, let's see who has the access issue. Remember, so Sandeep should be part of this. Sandeep is not part of this, that's why. Sandeep is there. There? Yeah, Sandeep is there. Now should be able to do that. Yeah. So create journal. Ledger is Blinkit. 
accounting date. Let's select today's date here. Now, general source, I'll show you the task after this general creation, how you can create your own general sources. And I'll show you one more task of operational general sources. For now, I'll just select uh, Adobe payment here as general source. Book code, I'll show you that part too. Uh, we have a lot to cover in this accounting journal. So we'll just hit continue for now. We'll create a basic one. And then we'll see the journal sources also, how to create journal sources. So I'll just pick uh, cash here. And I'll just put uh, bank here. Bank is getting credit. Of course, journal cost, like put, put anything here. Let's put 150. 150 here. And the cost center. Uh, let's put uh, ARC. And yes, we have to create a cost center also just to show you that. It's very easy. I'll show you after this example. Region looks nice. Let's hit OK. So Every first, company should have a cost center, right, Rahul? Uh, normally they would, right? A salary is like our salaries are created to a cost center. Right. Yeah, so definitely they should have a cost center. Not just one, many. Because operation is one, then your payroll is one. Okay, then IT is one, infrastructure is one. So like this, you have you know, you know, a lot of cost centers. Okay, it's in progress. Uh, why it's in progress? We have to see status history. Mm -hmm. Why in the ledger we are giving the company name? Yeah, see, ledger is just referring to a ledger is a kind of book. Okay, is a place uh, you have seen Banya shops, right? Where uh -huh. they just write down, okay, how much I've sold today, right? How much I sold today, how much I pay today, correct? So it's, it's a similar thing. A ledger is not we a place, it's a place where you just keep all the company. We are selecting a company in the ledger. Correct. So remember the task, create ledger. And we selected our company and we selected the actual ledger type there. Okay. So it's a place where we will capture all the original entries. Okay. Yeah. Simply just consider this as a book. Okay. Where we are keeping record of all the transactions. That's all. Okay. Okay. As and when we progress, you will understand more about this. Yeah, a little complicated. Yeah, yeah a little problem. complicated in the beginning, but soon you will understand this. It's very easy. Okay. Okay. Now we have to see why this journal is in progress. So process history, status history is this. It's not showing me process, business process history. So we have to fix that BP part. Why it's not showing the completed. Excuse me. Let's see the process history. Okay. Review journal accountant. Complete lab, that's why. Implementers. Accountant. Okay, now what it's going to there are no steps in it, just one issue is step accountant and implementers. Let's activate.
Okay. Now let's find journals. So this is a report to find your accounting journals, professional journals. So company BCG. Oops, BGC should be BGC then. EO was 202. Period is December. Hmm. And let's see what happened with the journal. Why it's in progress? What should not show in process history? Created in progress leap only. Is it like in some leap queue? Why process history is not coming here? Hmm. Business process definition error. Why is the bank code empty then? Bank code? No, that we can put. Uh, it's not like mandatory value. Uh, but this one, there's an error here. What is the error? If I'm marking this step as completed, what's wrong with you? What's why? Okay. Let's go to business process defining definition. This is a little strange. Oops. B. Approval. Accounting manager. And let me assign that accounting manager to what's wrong here now. Some steps are out of order. Step B, if we make all the systems to A. Okay, okay, that I'll fix. Don't worry. Is it okay now? Good. And now I have to assign this. So what we'll do, guys, is that we'll go to PGC and we'll assign this accounting manager to Teresa Serrano. So we'll just say roles. So how do we assign roles through this way? And now this is a great opportunity for me to discuss one more part. So we'll see how when we assign the roles at the company hierarchy level, that gets inherited to the company level too. Right now, if you see, accounting manager is blank here because we have not assigned this to anyone. Everything is blank here, typically. Accounting manager. So if I even select all of them to filter, you see everything is blank here. No one has been assigned as an accounting manager. Now, I'll just show you how to assign the company to company hierarchy as well, and then assign the roles to. So Blinkit Holdings Corporation, okay? This was our company hierarchy. We'll click on the three dots of the company. Remember, this is our company hierarchy. So first, we'll assign the company to company hierarchy. So we'll click on the three dots. And we'll find a thing called reorg. Look for this reorganization. As you can see, view one. Click on this assign included organizations. Then remember, we did create a blanket there yesterday. And hit OK. Now you type. PGC here, you have added the company. This is done. Now if you look at the details here, under that you will see it includes this company now. And if you click on these three dots again, and you click on navigate hierarchy, you see this company is rolling up to the company hierarchy now. <coughs> Clear with this process and step? How do you assign the company to company hierarchy? Okay, great. So we have, ooh. Abhi, is it clear to you? D, is it clear to you? You guys are on mute, but if it is not clear, just let me know. Now we'll assign the role. So we'll click on the company hierarchy three dots. Okay, this, remember this is our company hierarchy, Blinkit Holdings. 
we'll go to roles and assign roles. You can give an effective date of today's also, let's say. So today is what? This is MMDDYY. So we'll say 12, 22. I think today is 21. 21? Okay. So, 21. so based on yesterday effective date, we'll assign this accounting manager role. Teresa Serrano. We'll hit OK here. Okay, so it's done now. So if I go back to my company hierarchy now, if I click on roles, I should see that accounting manager role here. Let me pick this one. I'll hit okay here. And as you can see, it's assigned to Teresa Serrano. Now to make sure that yes, it went further to the company level also, we'll just Go to our company from here. We'll click on roles. And you would see for accounting manager, it will show inherited and Teresa Serrano. So let's find out accounting manager. Filter. Can you see it? inherited? So it got inherited from the company. Right. So as I said yesterday, it works from top to bottom. Clear on this, everyone? Yes, sir. Great. So now we'll find our journal again. We'll make the changes and we'll submit it again so it can go to Teresa Serrano for approval. Find journals. Company is uh, BGC. Then year is. Period is your December. It okay. It's in progress. I don't know what progress this is. Yeah, but we'll simply put add it here. We'll just make some changes. Continue. Let's make it 200 here. 200 here. And we'll submit. So look at the detail and process here. Process definition error. Hmm. What's wrong with this one? Process definition error. Again, a process definition error. Why? I don't see any error here. Okay, let's create one more journal. Mm, this time it doesn't happen. We'll see. We'll stop here if it doesn't work because I have to fix it. Like, what's wrong now? So, let me just put some error count here. And we need submit. Is the cost center of the other company? Is that the other company? Yeah, yeah this is the other one, but the problem is. 
But uh, for this company, we are using the cost center as the other company. Yeah, we for demo purpose only. Tomorrow I'll show you how to create cost centers for our company also. But I think you have to take a break today because I don't want to waste your time here. I need to fix this process definition error. Why it is that everything is aligned? It's correctly set up. 